tell me about adaptation. It's written in original work, but what, how do you approach adaptation? Adaptation, I guess I, I like it because, and it has to be something that inspires me in some way. So the birds, uh, we did an adaptation of Julius Caesar called Death of a Chief. Um, it has to be something that I care about that, that resonates for me in some way. I know I learn as much as I can about it, and then I pretty much do what I want. Mm -hmm. um, I have a desire to adapt Joseph Boyden's Three Day Road for the stage because I think at the heart of it, it is really a three or a four hander, a very small and intimate play. And the the other stuff, the war part of it, I think, and the bush part of it can all be dealt with through set and lights. Mm -hmm. And it's really the, the, the very small story of these, these people in this family. Um, so adaptation is, if, if there's something in there that really, really rings true for me, then I can do it. But it has, I have to want to. Um, I don't think I'd be, I'd be very good at like, will you write an adaptation of this? Um, if I have to stick too closely, I can't have too much reverence for my, for the source material. Right. How do you approach, uh, do you outline? How do you approach structure? Is it something you tackle right away? Is it something you... No. And it changes from play to play. The last play, The Unplugging, which started out as Two Old Women, oh, that's kind of an adaptation as well. I mean, the source material is a, an Athabascan story called Two Old Women that was recorded by uh, Velma Wallace, an Alaskan um, Gwich'in woman. But it's an old story, like generations, generations back. And What is the story? It's about two. It's pre-contact. Two old women who, in a time of need, are banished from their community because they're old and grouchy and useless. And in, and instead of dying, it's winter. Instead of dying, they have to go inside and remember what they what their traditional knowledge. And instead of dying, they thrive. And the community that's banished them realizes that they're thriving, and they send someone to ask them to come back. So that was the, that's the story. And it's about... Coriolanus, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> is it Coriolanus? Is joking. that why? I'm, you know, I have another question about Coriolanus. Stole it. That's yes, what I'm saying. indeed. Well, Shakespeare stole everything, but Absolutely. He, there's the great adopter. <laughs> exactly. Which is why we all want to be Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. um, so I took that, I knew that that was the story that I wanted to to sort of talk about, but because of my apocalyptic vision, mm -hmm. I moved it into the 21st century. And all the things, we, you know, the, the blackout in Toronto and all of those things that have been going on, the, the earthquakes and the tsunami and all of those things fed into my writing of the story set in the 21st century. And of course the women are not old in my story, they're like 50 and 60, but in terms of our culture, it's like women become invisible at 45 or something. And so all of that was feeding into, into two old, in my script, Two Old Women, The Unplugging. And then I sat, because I was still working at Native Earth, I didn't have any time. So I chose two chunks of time in the week that I could write. And I sat down at the laptop and I opened up and I wrote one sort of title of the scene. And I started to write. And for the first time in my life, I started at the beginning. I ended at the end, there was a middle, the thing came out in order, every time I opened up the laptop like some kind of miracle, I could just pick up and go on. And I knew when I got to the end, because I had arrived at the end, it told itself to me. I don't outline, I don't really structure. Sometimes I have written a play, the dramaturge has read it and gone, are you sure this is not, you know, if you move this scene here and this scene here, this would actually be a thriller or, you know, so I don't. Like I said, I've been blessed with dram good dramaturges who can see things that I don't see necessarily. Um, when I get something, when I'm right on something, I get, like, the hair stands up, right? Yeah. 
wow, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's like, oh, I've got it, I've got it. And then you have to like not pay attention to the I've got it feeling so that it that you don't stop it. Um, so far, I haven't done any outlining or structuring in that way, but the way the unplugging came, that's the first time that's ever happened. Usually I just write until something begins to reveal itself, not from beginning to end like that. And what's your, what's your habit? What's your, what's your writing hours? Do you write uh, like four or five hours a day? Or do you not write at all until you're inspired? Or? No, I mostly I avoid writing for four or five hours a day. Mm. Oh, I'm a bad, I'm bad. Uh, I, you know, we'll talk about that in a second. But go, go ahead. I once I start, uh, if I, I it's like I, if I can just sit in the chair for forty minutes and write, mm -hmm. that's good, yeah. right? Because once you're actually into the into that forty, once you're actually inside the forty minutes, then it becomes two hours, and it becomes three hours, and then you start living inside the world of the writing, and you're able to go back to it. That's so. I try to I try to hit the I try to make the forty minute rule. I just if I can just do forty minutes, because that will grow into the other thing. But I'm a really bad avoider of writing. Uh, is the internet? your friend during that time? Do you just like go down the rabbit hole on the internet sometimes? Nah, I'm not. Yeah. I try to avoid it mm -hmm. because I know that I'm not, I'm not a big YouTuber. I'm not a big, I don't, I'm not on the social network. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid of the Facebook. Um, I don't Twitter. I am though. And when I saw the social network, I was like, that's why I'm afraid of the Facebook. <laughs> All of the things I thought about it are true. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also know that it, it would be easy for me to go down that rabbit hole and not do any work at all. Mm -hmm. It's easy still to fall into the Google research thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to know this right now mm -hmm. about the shelf life of tea yeah. in order to f finish the scene and really. So I've started to train myself to just put in like a, a line there mm -hmm. so that I don't actually go into the internet. Very smart. Yeah, I have to because I would, like my, when I'm writing, my dishes are done, my floors are clean, <laughs> my laundry's folded. I'll do anything to avoid writing. It's funny because I was going to say that I, I, at this stage, I think that there are two kinds of modes of writing. There's the conscious mind writing and then there's the unconscious mind writing. And I honestly think that when you're, like once you've made that decision, like, okay, I'm writing now, even if you're sitting around looking at the window, you're writing. Something's happening in your unconscious that you need to know about. And then you'll, something will happen on the page where your unconscious goes, oh yeah, boom, there you go. Yeah. Because have you ever had that experience where you're, you know, you're writing for hours and hours to try and solve something? And doesn't come to you. And then you're out walking. You see a squirrel, and you go, "Ah, oh, if the character had a squirrel or whatever." Yes. Oh, except sometimes it's not. It's sometimes it's so tangential from yeah. the squirrel. It's like, mm -hmm. ah, the the diamond is in the shape of an acorn. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I know. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And when I agreed to do like we're doing the I don't know more wrecking ball coming up. When I agreed to do it, and I'm like, oh, I'm just avoiding the thing I'm really writing by agreeing to do some other writing for someone else, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was driving out to pick up my coat out by Kipling. Mm -hmm. And because that's such a long drive on the gardener and you're just driving, the Idle No More wrecking ball piece just landed on my head. Right. And I knew it, yeah. everything at once. And I was like, Damn, I know how that goes. I can probably knock that off in an afternoon, and now I'm going to have to find a new thing to, <laughs> a new way to avoid the writing I'm actually doing. Anybody else do I'm thing? very productive when I'm not writing. I know, it's great, isn't it? <laughs> now, speaking of productive when you're not writing, what, uh, what do, you, do you have writer's block? Do you ever get writer's block? Do you ever feel, uh, what do you believe exists? Do you, some people don't even believe it exists. I'm sure it exists. Wow, it's a bit like talking about depression, right? You don't really want to acknowledge it mm -hmm. yeah. because then that gives it too much power. Mm -hmm. It probably, I'm sure it exists, but I can always write something. 
even if it's not the thing I'm supposed to be writing. So I'll write other, like, emails, letters, um, complaints, essays, grant applications, all of those other things. And very often I have two screens going, like the screen that I'm supposed to be working on and the screen that I'm doing something else on. And then it, and it's the squirrel, right? It's the squirrel in the tree. I'm working away on, on this whatever, and it's like, oh, flip screen. Put in a few words there. Sometimes I think I just don't have anything important to say. Mm -hmm. And so, except, you know, now I'm writing this book on Native Theatre, and and so I should be writing it all the time, and I have things to say about that, and I'm trying to get it all out of my head and onto the page before I forget it, or it falls into the holes in my brain and it's irretrievable. Mm -hmm. um, so I should be writing that as well as avoid, you know, all the other things I'm avoiding. I like to think of it now again that, you know, you become a better writer by writing, but also you become a better writer with age. And so if you do it tomorrow, you're with that one day more <laughs> You're one day more experience. You're, one, you're like 24 hours a better writer. So That's uh, good. I'm going to use that. Exactly. I'm totally using that. <laughs> yeah. But you could write it today, but tomorrow you're going to be that much better writer. <laughs> um, what would you say to a young artist? Because I got a lot of, lot of young first time writers who say to me, Oh man, I'm writing this play, but I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. What do you say to them? Get your friends in your living room, give them beer and pizza, and have them read it. I mean, that's the thing about what we do, right? Like, theater has to be on the voice. Mm -hmm. 